Now that our worksheet has header rows, thanks to the select tool, we can finalize our outflow workflow by doing two things. First, we want to remove those unwanted rows at the bottom. If you remember and we scroll down, we had notes here in the file that have now, because we asked Alteryx to read the Hawaii ID in as a double data type, meaning number data type, is now replaced with a null because the letters were not numbers. So we need to remove those rows at the bottom. And then the last thing that we need to do is we want to make this workflow portable, either because we can use it again within this workbook or because we want to use it in other places or we want other people to be able to use it. So we'll show you how to do both of those in this video. Let's begin by removing the unwanted rows at the bottom. We could do so one of two ways. One, we could use another select tool and this time instead of choosing to skip the first couple rows, we'll say keep a certain number of rows. Alternatively, I'm going to show you a new tool called the filter tool, and this is still within the preparation menu. It's over right next to the data cleansing tool, so we can go ahead and grab the filter tool and pull it onto our canvas. And when we do so, we see that this tool looks a little bit different than some of the other tools that we've been using because it has two output anchors. The first output anchor is T for true, and this says, okay, what values or observations are kept when the condition that you set forth is true? And then the F stands for false, and it says, okay, what observations are kept when the condition is false? To set the condition, we come over to our configuration window, and we could use either a basic filter or a custom filter. The basic filter is going to work just fine for our purposes, so we'll go ahead and leave that radial button selected. And now we got to tell it, okay, which column would you like to filter on? So we can go ahead and click on the drop down menu to select the column. And we could use Hawaii ID or any of the last three. They will all work just the same way. So we'll just select the Hawaii ID column. And we want to say, OK, in the Hawaii ID column, we would like you to get rid of observations if. And so in order to put that if condition on, we're going to go to the next box and we're going to click on the drop down menu. And we're going to say is not null. If you remember when we scrolled down, the information that was contained in the notes had been replaced by nulls. So we're now telling it to get rid of rows in the Hawaii ID column that have a null value. So this will get rid of the last two rows. Now that we have configured our filter tool, we can go ahead and run that tool. And what we see when we click on true is that our data set now does not contain the last two rows. If we were to click on the F output anchor, we would see the two rows that have been eliminated. Having these dual anchors is incredibly um, efficient because now if you want to go back and see what you did or which observations got eliminated, it's very easy for you to toggle between the true and false output anchors to see what was kept and what was eliminated. In addition, if somebody needs to review what you've done or they want to replicate it, they'll be able to also click on these anchors to see what it is that you did and what observations were kept and which ones were eliminated with your filter. We have now completely finished the outflow workflow for 1516. To make it easier to copy and paste this entire workflow and its configurations all at once, we want to add this workflow to a container. To do so, we're going to go ahead and move our mouse up to the blank space on the canvas above our first tool, the input tool. We're going to click once with our mouse and we're going to drag it across all of our tools. As you do so, you'll see this blue box appear around the tools that you're selecting. Go ahead and release your mouse and you will see that once you've done so, you have now highlighted every one of the tools or selected them. This puts them into a thing where we can now move them all at once if we wanted to move them up or down. Or like we're going to do, we're going to add it to a container. You can hover over any one of the tools, and once you hover over it, you can then right click to get a submenu. When you do so, you will find the Add to New Container option on your submenu. Go ahead and select that using a left click, and that'll give you your container. You can either rename the container up in the caption box up here, or by double clicking on over the word container and in my case, 14. So we can go ahead and rename this to 1516 Outflow so that we know what this workflow is. Once we hit enter, that becomes the name of that. 
We have one more nice thing about these containers. It allows us to minimize the workflow so that we can see other parts of our canvas by either clicking on the blue box at the upper left hand corner or by clicking on the arrow in the upper right hand corner. And to get it back, it's just reversing the process by clicking that again.